I think for this question, I should show you two ways to solve it. There's the easy way, which solves this question, but we don't really learn anything from it. Uh, so it's a good way if you're at the test center and you get this question, but it's not a very good way if you're at home trying to actually learn and study and prepare for the GMAT. And then I'll show you the more advanced technique after the intro. So for the easy solution, we're told that x is some positive integer, so we can immediately start thinking of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for x, and then go ahead and execute that and see which of the answer choices doesn't work out. So if x is 1, then 4 to the power of x is 4. Subtracting the 3, I get 1, and that's answer choice A. So answer choice A is possible. The next option is x equals 2, which makes 4 to the power of x equal to 16. Subtracting 3 from that, I get 13, which is answer choice C. But what about answer choice B? I didn't skip any options for x. I tried x equals 1, then I tried x equals 2. This tells me that b is impossible. We can't get b when x is a positive integer, so b must be the correct answer. We can pick it and we can move on. So let's look at the more advanced thinking right after the intro. It turns out that when we raise any number to positive integer powers, exponents, there is always going to be a repeating pattern to the units digit. I go into all of that in my book, and you can also see the patterns there, and you can also learn how to develop the patterns on your own so you don't have to memorize anything. In this particular case, our base is 4, so we can think about what happens to the units digit when you start multiplying 4 times itself over and over again. So it goes 4 and then 6, because 4 times 4 is 16. And then just keeping the units digit, the 6, multiplied by 4, that gets us back to our starting point of 4, because 6 times 4 is 24. And from there, it's just going to repeat. So we have 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6. And we can make the connection that if the exponent is odd, then the units digit will be 4. And if the exponent is even, then the units digit will be 6. So understanding that the units digit has to be either 4 or 6 for any positive integer value of x, then we can see that subtracting 3 from that units digit, whether it's 4 or 6, would lead to 1 or 3, respectively. And we can just pick the answer choice that doesn't have a units digit of 1 or 3. In this case, that's answer choice B. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.